The first question is, do you actually need a calorie surplus in order to build muscle? And a lot of people out there will give a black and white yes or no answer to this question, but the real answer is that it depends. Thank you, Sean, for making my job a little bit easier. So yeah, just hanging out here, making sort of an impromptu video, but I mean, I made some bullet points so I stay organized. But uh, yeah, I got Bart Simpson back here with a bandana on. Eat my shorts. I've got my hood on like a Sith Lord. <laughs> and some blue light blockers. Yeah, they're not real glasses. I'm an imposter. Do they actually work? I don't know. Don't judge me. Anyway, so yeah, talking about sort of a drama event going on right now, um, and I'm in the middle actually of working on my next bigger video, which is going to be kind of like my history of fitness video, which if you haven't checked that out yet, I highly recommend that you do so. It'll be way better than any drama video ever would be. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one. It's gonna be a history of bodybuilding. Woo! Anyway, before I really get into this, I wanna preface the video with kind of like what it's gonna be about. No, this will not be like some grand defense for Greg. Like I am on the record saying that I do in fact have a lot of respect for Greg. I mean, you know, he's made some mistakes of course, but like on the whole, I have a lot of respect for him. I consider him a friend in the fitness space, but if he wants to come and defend himself, he's more than welcome to do so about any of the contradictions or whatever the heck he feels is necessary to respond to. I don't know if he even thinks he's gonna, I don't know if he's gonna respond, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not very good at t talking to the camera, so bear with me. Yeah, it's not gonna be a big defense for Greg, but his name's gonna come up a lot because his name's all over this topic. But yeah, I, I plan to discuss why I like Greg, why I chose to become an affiliate for Harder Than Last Time, and also defend myself against Revival Fitness's like using conjecture to like, like make these bold claims about me and, you know, kind of drag my name a little bit. I think that's the term drag people is like when you speak ill of them on the internet and say not mean things. Anyway. This guy named Tom watches this channel. He'll comment here every now and then. And he likes the content, but he's always defending Greg. He's a noble Greg defender. So this guy is getting affiliate codes and getting commissions for selling Greg Doucette's products, literally in his own link tree. And he's going to come and try to be the objective arbiter of truth about main gaining. Really, Tom? Like, this is the best you have, bro? Like, dude, listen, if you're going to be a politician, at least be a good politician. Like, you're going to have to do better than this, man. Let me say this, okay? To Tom, to whatever other hundreds of thousands of channels that are small and still try to suck up to Greg for clout. Maybe I'm the bearer of bad news here. It ain't gonna work. There are still so many small channels that think they're gonna ride Greg's jock to any sort of relevancy or fame or clout. Not gonna happen, bro. I know it's very enticing. You get your little affiliate code and Greg might make a video about you. If I'm not mistaken, Tom, Greg has a direct video about you. Oh, that's not very nice. Then there was a part of the video where I sort of had mixed feelings. He sort of went after Tom Lazarek. Um, for those of you who don't know Tom, he is a content creator as well. I've actually promoted some of his stuff before. He has very, very good content. I also really don't like how Revival Fitness extended this whole manipulation narrative to Tom Lazarek. I haven't interacted with Tom too, too much, but from all my interactions, he's just like one of the nicest guys you'll meet on this platform. <laughs> And make sure you watch and listen to the whole video before, like, making up your mind or leaving a comment or whatever. Like, come on. That's only fair, right? To start, I really do gotta say that I honestly did not know that main gaining was a term that Greg apparently termed. I, or coined. I didn't know that it was a, a term that he created. I did not know that. Like, I, I assumed it was another term like, in the same vein as, like, lean bulking, gain-taining, maintenance, clean bulking, recomping, blah, 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 all the, yeah. I, I know Greg has said that he doesn't condone bulking of any kind, like lean bulking or otherwise, but I kind, I, I'm somebody who gets very hung up on semantics, and we'll touch more on that a little bit later. But yeah, words are important to me, so I kind of still just, like, lumped it in with the idea of like lean bulking sort of thing, just because I kind of understood where he was coming from with what I understood his definition of main gaining to be. Which again, I, I, I guess I could have like put it all together and figured out that yeah, he probably created that term, but I don't know. I, 
I just assumed it already existed. There's a lot of freaking words and terms and buzzwords and blahs and blues in fitness. Like, yeah, it's hard to keep up sometimes. But yeah, like YouTubers like Scooby, Kino Body, Buff Dude, Sean Nalawani. Like I've heard like s s similar uh, topics, terms, whatever brought up in their videos for like the longest time. So I just, yeah, I assume main gaining was another term like that. That was basically the same thing. And that's the word that Greg was choosing to use. So anyway, enough about that. My point there, though, is I'd, I'd heard about it being a thing, or so I thought anyway, but when I heard, when I stumbled upon Greg and started watching some of his videos, he was the one who managed to convince me that putting on muscle without putting on much fat was a viable option. But yeah, as, you know, in Revival's video, which I, I do gotta say again, very impressive, like a two-hour-long, like, behemoth of a video, I have a, some issues with it, obviously, or I wouldn't be making this video. Yeah, in that video, you brought up that Greg did contradict himself a bit, and there's, like, clear evidence of that. So, yeah, that's a problem. But, at the same time, this brings me to one of my biggest points I want to make in the video, which, again, I, I kind of referenced earlier with the, the semantics bit, but, yeah, I... What annoys me so much in this debate comes down to the, the semantics, the wordage, the terms, the misunderstand, the, yeah, the misunderstandings surrounding all that. And I, I don't personally think I'm being overly pedantic by wanting to discuss the semantics issue in this debate. My issue with the way that bulking is promoted is that it's assumed that if you want to put on muscle, you must be in a surplus. But like, what the hell is a surplus? Is it? simply just adding calories on top of whatever your current calorie allotment is that puts you at whatever body fat percentage you've been maintaining? Is it just adding calories onto that? Because what if your whatever you were at to begin with was already enough calories and enough body fat to support muscle growth? <laughs> yeah. Why are we just saying you must bulk to put on muscle? Like, Everyone's start point is different. Like, what's, like, if you're above 0% body fat, you're technically in a surplus. And, like, the more of a surplus you're in from that point on, the more fat and muscle you were put on. Muscle to a point, obviously. But, and yeah, extreme example, I'm not, I mean, obviously 0% body fat equals death. I'm just trying to make a point here. So when Greg says things like adding calories onto maintenance will just create excess body fat... I understand what he's getting at. Like, he's not wrong, technically. Like, if you put... Like, it doesn't mean you will get fat, per se, but you will eventually, you know, be putting on body fat. Like, it's... I understand what he's saying. Like, if you're going above what you were at before, which what you were at before is what what is maintenance, I would assume, like, you're gonna put on some body fat. That's kind of the point. So, like, I, I understood that. Even though maintenance is like a vague and relative concept. Like, you know, that's kind of the part of the point of this video is it's, these terms are sometimes sort of, they're either vague and or relative, individual, you know, subjective, whatever. Because yeah, everyone's maintenance will be different. There's no definable maintenance. It's not like maintenance equals 15% body fat or whatever. It's like, that's not what it is. That's not how it works. And then Greg has said at other points that like, yeah, if you are too lean, then bulk up. But it's like, that made sense to me too, because he's not trying to promote that you should, you know, main gain too lean. It's like, but yeah, the whole point of main gaining, as far as I understood it, was being at your happy and healthy set point for you as an individual, which is something that you decide for yourself. You be honest with yourself about and something you have to kind of figure out for yourself. And people have conflated when Greg says, if you're, if you don't have abs, then you're fat. If you don't have abs, you are fat, fat. People have conflated that to being the same as saying that everyone should main gain from sub percent or sub 10% body fat, which that seems like kind of a leap to me. Like, don't get me wrong. I do think it's problematic that he said that if you don't have abs, you're fat. You know, there's a lot of reasons that's problematic, but the, the main issue that I find with it personally is that everybody's abdominal development's going to be different. 
So, you know, like for me, me, for example, I have very well developed abs, which I would, people will often just say, oh, it's all genetics, whatever. But like, I trained the fuck out of my abs, like throughout my whole fitness journey, like, and like progressively. But yeah, enough about that. Point is like, when I get to body fat levels that most people's abs would usually disappear at, you could see like some abs. But like, again, he he says, if you, if you don't have abs, you're fat, which like, again, this is kind of like a vague relative sort of subjective thing because like abs does not equal six pack, you know, abs means like visible little rigid visuals. And I know people, you know, in the video, it's brought up that Greg's has said that he believes himself to be fat, even though, you know, most people would probably not say that that's fat. I, you know, I don't know. He can comment on that if he wants to. I don't know what to say about it. But yeah, even at like levels like, you know, closer to 20%, I, I even would say above 20% in certain cases, like you can still see some of the lines. But anyway, I want to make it clear that I, I do understand how Greg's, the way that Greg presented main gaining could confuse some people. But I also, again, kind of think that's rooted in the terminology a bit. To reiterate, this is what I understood. So like, again, you can say that Greg lied to everybody or whatever, but like, this is what I understood based on the information he gave me. But main gaining was more or less choosing where you found that you had energy in the gym and were happy and healthy, which is implied to be somewhere usually below 20% body fat for a male. In the fitness space, it's mostly going to be dudes watching these videos. So talking about dudes, yeah, it's usually going to be, you know, healthy is going to be below 20%. And what's often considered to be one of the, the healthiest points for most men to be at is like that 15% is like usually, you know, again, it's, it's going to depend, but 15% is usually considered to be good. I understood main gaining to be happy and healthy set point. Do you like the way you look? As well, you know, you feel good physically and mentally, emotionally, all the all the stuff. I mean, like, yeah, that's what sold me on this whole thing. I, a, a balanced approach that, like, you know, a habitual sort of, like, a lifestyle, you know? No yo-yoing. Like, you know, you may need to bulk up to get to your maintenance, like, your appropriate maintenance point. Because, I don't know, maybe, like, before you started at the gym, you didn't, eat a whole lot, you didn't have a big appetite, but then you start going to the gym and it's like you realize, oh, I, I need food to grow. My body's telling me, ah, add calories onto that. You may need to bulk up in certain instances, but it's like once you've bulked up to your appropriate point, again, that's something that you decide, then just maintain that until clearly you've recomped or whatever into your body fat and then just add more calories. Like it, you can, clearly you can't main gain forever. I don't th I wouldn't think I would I would hope that Greg didn't like imply that you're going to main gain at the same calorie level forever. Like that doesn't make any sense. So again, that's not never what I assumed. So yeah, why add more calories onto something where you already feel like you're good? You know, just because you know, eat big to get big kind of whatever jargon. But yeah, the the word surplus in particular has become like weirdly triggering for me. Ah. So yeah, I know you, you're you going to come for me now, you trolls. You're going to come and say, surplus, surplus, surplus. Ah, surplus monster is going to get you. Ah, like not actually, like whatever. It's a fucking word. Like if I'm trying to maintain 10% body fat and I'm told that that's too lean, it's is it then assumed just add two to 500 calories on top of that? And then, you know, maybe my body fat goes up a few percentage points. But then some will say 13% is still too lean to main, to maintain or whatever, or to bulk from, or I don't know. See, it's all these freaking words. Like what the, and no, I'm not saying I'm trying to main, main gain at 10% body fat. And I wouldn't advise that any natural lifter try that really. I mean, it might work for you. I'm, I'm sure there are people out there. If I had to, if I had to guess for myself right now, I'm probably between 12 and 14 ish. I don't know. That's, that's probably about, that's my estimate. Like, there are times where I feel like I might dip maybe a little closer to 10%, but it's not usually on purpose. Like, I'm always trying to hit a certain calorie goal, but it is very fucking hard because life happens, you know? But I'm always trying. And I'm also, like, super fucking active. Like, jeepers, creepers. Am I making sense so far? Because I really freaking hope so. Like, when we talk about maintenance and we talk about a surplus, there's so much to discuss as a part of that equation. 
if you take any given lifter and you don't have information like diet, training history, body fat percentage, you, you, you can't just slap on the calorie surplus is necessary for building muscle for this lifter. It's like, no, you need, we need more information. Like, yeah, if you're too lean for your own good, that's when you add the calories, which like, I don't understand how that bit is any sort of contradiction. Like if you, again, like going back to my extreme example, like if you're above 0% body fat, you are in a surplus. So yeah, if you're too lean, add calories to that. That's kind that should be kind of implied. Like, it's not just like main gain, boom, go. It's like, no, like if you don't feel good, put more calories on your body, like put more, or in your body, not on your body. Well, Whatever you're into, I don't know. Sure, I think you should take a look at. Whoa! No! What? what? What have I said about knocking? And like, the average person, and even the average consumer of fitness, do they have any idea how many calories they're actually eating? Like for real? Like you have to be weighing everything to even know, like, be that accurate. Let alone, like, yeah, people are not. People do not know how many calories they're eating. Like, you know, on that same. Tra train of thought, like, how many freaking people know what their body fat percentage really is? Like, there are so many misconceptions about body fat. So, like, there are just, there's a lot of issues within this whole conversation for me. So why, okay, why do I like Greg so much? Am I just some delusional fanboy, some clout chaser? And, you know, personally, I think the automatic turning to, like, calling somebody a nut hugger just because they like Greg. I think that's like super freaking reductive. Like that's very like unfair. And, and no, I do not condone everything that Greg has done. But I, I definitely don't think that he's somebody worth me hating. And like we have a, a good relationship, he and I. And he's helped me, so I help him in return. Like coming up on my fitness journey, I struggled a lot with overeating and unwanted fat gain. Like, I was never fat, I'm not trying to say that, but again, as mentioned earlier, like, these are all subjective and kind of relative terms, like, even, like, or too fat or too lean, like, those are kind of relative, subjective things. But the bottom line is, I dealt with a lot of body image issues, and I would often binge eat, as I always had a huge freaking appetite, even to this day, but yeah, I would always... Binge, I would often binge eat, not always binge eat, but I would often binge eat, and that was just made worse by the yo-yo that was, you know, my approach to bulking and cutting. Like, I'm not lying, it made it worse. That's my experience. It caused a ton, a ton of stress for me. And my older brother, all the while, he was, he never, never bulked and cut. And he made very, like, comfortable, steady progress. Like, better than I was making, and yeah, he's my older brother, but still, like... It was like kind of night and day to some extent, especially considering that I was always in a more of a higher body fat state than he ever was. And yeah, this is like the first like 10 years of my fitness journey, so to speak. My fitness journey is kind of like a 15 year ordeal. It's, I'll, I'll explain that probably at a later date. But anyway, during most of that time, I was, I was around, you know, above 15% body fat, that's for sure. And, you know, I've remained, you know, somewhere above 15% body fat until I started implementing more of like the cutting principles. But yeah, for my bulks, I would I would add calories for the hell of it and gain the fat, not get that much stronger, you know, not look the way I wanted to at all, cut down, not look all that much more muscular. And, you know, that was kind of like the process for a bit. Like the bulking and cutting definitely like I know YouTube doesn't like these words apparently so I don't know what that means for this video but like bulking and cutting definitely contributed to my eating disorder and my body dysmorphia just like that's the truth and like most people will pin at least at this point body dysmorphia on the main gaining thing and it's like that's what the experience of a lot of people based on the misunderstandings but this is my experience as well like I'm not discrediting their experience but don't discredit my experience like, would you, would you prefer that I lie? I'm not out here trying to glorify bits of Greg's advice to make him look better. Like, so when I encountered a video of Greg's saying very plainly that you don't need to bulk and cut to build muscle and that muscle building can be more of a consistent lifestyle, 
I personally felt very hopeful. And on top of that, Greg snapped me out of like the fad diets crap, um, really solidified the calories in versus calories out, really stressed the importance of cardio and uh, even just like controlling the weight in the gym, like really being more like uh, serious about controlling the weight and your form and just not yo lifting. Uh, that was huge as well. All of these pieces of advice worked very well for me. And like, honestly, Greg is, he changed my approach to fitness more than probably anyone. And I knew I am not pandering. It's actually quite difficult to be honest about this sort of stuff because it gives people the ammunition to then call you a nut hugger, which is what a lot of people have been saying a lot lately about, you know, Greg Doucette nut huggers. Anybody who likes Greg or supports Greg is a nut hugger. Ah. Uh, which I think is very unfortunate. Again, very reductive in my opinion. But I know that the fact that I'm an affiliate of Greg's makes this a little bit muddier, or so it would seem. But, you know, that's something that's also hard for me to talk about because I feel like no matter what I say, nobody's going to believe me. But that's just the way it is, I guess. I don't like to promote anything without having tried it first. So, like, I think that's a pretty basic quality for somebody who has integrity, which I would like to think that I have. I, you can decide for yourself, but I know what I know, and I say I have integrity. And when it comes to the idea of fat loss in particular, I think that Greg is a freaking genius, man. Like, a freaking genius. Like, I his, – his ideas about, uh, you know, high-volume, low-calorie-dense foods, it was very helpful for me. And a lot of his recipes – have helped me. Like I, I did because of what I'd seen prior to when his cookbook, his first cookbook came out. I was like, Greg's helped me so far, and you know the recipes he showcased so far have been helpful. I'm gonna buy his book. And again, this is to support a content creator that I had a lot of respect for and somebody who had helped me. I think that a lot of these recipes can in fact help a lot of people. They're not for everyone. The book may be the biggest fucking waste of money for a lot of people, but not everyone. But I know that Greg can be a bit assertive, aggressive, whatever you want to call it with his marketing of his, his products, in particular his cookbooks. But I mean, they can help a lot of people. And you know, he's not literally forcing people to buy the books. But yeah, it, it was game changing to me. Does that make me a shady character? Am I a part of the scheme to sell harder than last time products? and keep lifters small, I would say that your tinfoil hat is on a wee bit too tight. <laughs> These are some of the things that Revival implied about me and, you know, used a lot of conjecture to do so as he is clearly not very familiar with who I am as a person, or at least I would hope so because his response was, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I mean, perhaps I did become an affiliate too soon, but I was excited by the idea and I mean, if other, if another YouTuber that I trusted offered similar, a similar opportunity, I would likely have taken it, but they didn't. And Greg did. And I don't even think that I've made any money off of it so far. Like I'm not, I'm honestly not a money grubbing person whatsoever. Like I'm, my goals are much more, uh, achievement based, I guess, not money based. Like I'm trying to like make something of myself. I really want to share. I feel like I have a lot of good ideas like that aren't really talked about very much in fitness, which I'll, you know, discuss further along down the line that I think could help a lot of people. So I'm hoping to like become, a, a, make a name for myself as both a filmmaker and a fitness trainer in the fitness space or just in the world at large. Ah, think big. Yeah, but also like calling or implying that I'm a Greg fanboy, like in that really der derogatory sort of way. But it's hilarious considering that I'm on the record as saying that uh, Jeffrey Verretti Schofield is one of my favorite YouTubers. I watch every video he puts out. Like, I think he's great. Most of us, I feel, know about the beef between those two. So, yeah. But it, it's, it just kind of sucks. Like, you know, nuance is important, which is something that you had said in your video, Revival. Speaking directly to you, hopefully you're watching this. Haha. <laughs> but yeah, nuance is important. And it just sucks that it's like, just because I like Greg, it's just all of a sudden it's like I'm lumped in this certain way. And again, I know I'm also an affiliate of his. I get that. But I, I, I touched on that. I Maybe it's wrong that I'm an affiliate of his. I don't know. But I have my reasons for doing it. But it's also like, why does being, you know, liking and trusting Greg, being an affiliate of his, why does that make it so my opinion automatically doesn't matter? And like, you know, Josh Brett, great example right here. I think that Josh Brett is truly one of the 
greats in the industry right now. I think he, like, I really mean that. I think he's putting out some of the the best content out there. Like, he's inspired me a lot in how I want to approach YouTube going forward. Like, I was always a fan of, like, video essay style videos. But, like, when he started putting out, like, the more grand, like, documentary style stuff and, like, those were becoming more popular, I was like, oh, my goodness. I think I want, this is how I want to approach my YouTube going forward. But anyway, getting kind of on a tangent. I'm good at that. Josh has, he's demonstrated to me that he trusts and respects Greg. So is it like, is it like screw Josh Brett all of a sudden because of that? I think that that's pretty unfair personally. But yeah, uh, Josh is another guy that I've connected with more recently, which is super exciting. Seems like a really nice guy. But yeah, the more the better. Like I've, I've connected with YouTubers large and small. Like Greg just happens to be the biggest YouTuber that has shown me support. He's continued showing me support ever since he first shouted me out, so. And I, I really like that Greg did that. Like, I mean, maybe he has ulterior motives. I don't know, but his doing that, like, it further inspired me to like, you know, it's cool to connect with other YouTubers and it's cool to support other YouTubers. Again, large or small. Just like anybody who is just, is uh, kind to you, like you form some sort of bond with, like just support one another. Like I'm always, I'm always trying to show support to YouTubers that I met in this space. Like people like Greg, like Jeffrey Vredy Schofield, like Johnny Shreve, um, Aaron Maltz of FitLab is one of my favorite dudes I have met since starting YouTube. Awesome dude, freaking awesome dude. And uh, I've been wanting a massage gun for a while. I'm going somewhere with this. I know that might seem random. But uh, I wanted a massage gun for a while. I've been wanting one. And I was reminded of that when he was then affiliated with a company. Aaron was. FitLab was affiliated with a company. And therefore, he was advertising their massage gun for them. So I was like, I trust Aaron. He's a buddy of mine. So I use his affiliate code to buy the gun. And I fucking love it. And I've been showing it off to friends and, you know, whoever. And I've even gotten some to buy it with his affiliate code. So I just, you know, I'm just, you know, paying it forward. Like Aaron's been very nice to me, very supportive of me. And it's like, I think that he's somebody who deserves to have a name in the fitness world. So it's like, support your friends. And then there's um, Eli, not dead yet. I support him on Patreon and I, you know, watch and comment on his videos. And then there's uh, Pete on Purpose is another dude who I recently, or not, not that recently, but you know, within the last few months, Somebody who I've become a friend of, and I've been supporting him, watching and commenting on his videos, as well as uh, Daniel Barrios, become OP, another guy I think is doing great stuff, really nice dude. So yeah, showing him lots of great support. Uh, I bought a shirt of Mama Swole's to show her the support, show her the love, and uh, recently started watching Brendan Gage, and I'm really liking his stuff, always leaving him the, the love on his videos, because it's not that hard a thing to do, and it's like... I know that I would appreciate it if that sort of thing, if I'm given that kind of support. So why not do that for other people kind of thing? And again, that includes Greg. I just, I just put everybody in the same area. Greg, again, is just like the biggest name. He's the, he's the most clickable name. He's, but yeah, I found, I found revivals. I found his representation of me to be a bit dirty. I like, I'm just, he implied that I'm all, I'm doing every, all of this in service of Greg, like automatically, like that was where his head went. That's where his mind went. It wasn't even like he questioned it. It was like, I don't know. It just seemed very, ah. and I can understand why you might think that based on the evidence, I guess. But at the same time, like, why would you put me on blast unless you, unless you know, I don't know. I just, I didn't think it was all that cool. Like I, I was a fan of Rev I was a fan of you, man. I, I like I was mentioning all those other YouTubers. Like I was trying to, I found you, and I was like, oh, I like this dude. He's doing some cool stuff. I, he's really good with editing. He's got a fun personality. But then, like I don't know, like it's kind of like come off as a bit overly aggressive. And I, I obviously didn't like the way you were representing. I know I said promoting in one of my comments. I'm sorry about that. I didn't. And I really feel as though you're doing your subs a disservice by wrongfully promoting main gaining. Well, first of all, I don't promote it. I don't know why I use the word promoting. Clearly, you're not promoting main gaining. I said wrongfully promoting. I meant like wrongfully representing main gaining. But again, I understand I understand the confusion with the terminology. But I always try to be fair. Like I something I like to bring up is you did a video where you commented on how Athlean X is saying he's 
I don't remember what he what it was. It was like something over 190 pounds, which was in the thumbnail of his video, but he didn't actually say that's how much he weighed in the video. He said he was like 170 something. And he's going to go on YouTube and say he weighs 196 pounds allegedly, which is absolutely ludicrous. There's no way Athlean X weighs anything more than 170, and that is a stretch. Okay, so 175, we'll take off two pounds for the, the clothes. So one, 173-ish. And I'm not, I'm honestly not a, a big fan of Athlean X. Like, I don't hate the guy, but like, I think he's, he, he's kind of a problematic in a lot of ways. And then like, when you were showing me off in the video, like, you cut my comment off before the part about natural hypertrophy, which, I mean, that was just a point I was making because he did a video about main gaining and I thought that like, what he was saying made perfect sense and it was like, he was basing it on the way that Greg represented it, so I was like, okay, he seems to get it. Beforehand, I found a bunch of people who disagreed with the concept, and to me, the concept is sound. Because if you watch the channel, if you watch the dietary advice I give, I highly encourage people to either maintain or do very, very slow and small cut and books. I do not believe in the massive cycles of cutting and bulking, and therefore I perfectly subscribe to the main gaining concept. Main gaining means that you're mainly gaining lean mass, and therefore you're not going to go through insane fat gains and losses that the bulking and cutting cycle is going to create. And I actually appreciate that it's coming from someone like Greg, who is on steroids, because that very idea that you're supposed to bulk in winter and cut in summer came from pro bodybuilders. The issue is that it doesn't work with naturals. When you're natural, you can only gain so much muscle as you bulk. The idea that the more of a caloric surplus you enter, the more muscles you gain, is a myth. The only thing that you're going to gain extra of is fat. So I, I left a comment, and his response was something along the lines of main gaining critics hate Greg Doucette is like, that's kind of what it comes down to, which I, I kind of agree with to some extent. And again, there are other YouTubers who brought up concepts similar to like, you know, things that go against the traditional bulking and cutting, like whether you want to call it main gaining or not. Sorry, my hands all in your face. Um, but yeah, there was a uh, Scooby classic Scooby, one of the OGs of YouTube fitness, like super honest, trustworthy, cool dude. Um, somebody who's had a lot of steady progress himself. And he's somebody who does not really advocate for like traditional bulking and cutting methodologies. Like he does use words like bulking and cutting, of course, because that's very, very common with bodybuilders. But like he doesn't promote it in the same way as a lot of others do. How much of a caloric surplus to run is a hotly debated topic. And the reason it is, because it's different for everyone. All the magazine articles you read in Flex and the Muscle Mags, they're catered to steroid using bodybuilders. And Scooby has promoted maintaining one's body fat in, you know, pursuit of building muscle. And uh, Tiger Fitness, Mark Lobliner, I believe, yeah, he had a video where he commented on Scooby. Okay, Scooby's right. I believe that natural bodybuilders bulk too fucking much, man. A natural bodybuilder should not go over 20 pounds over their stage weight. I think 16% is more than fat enough for you. I think instead of bulking and cutting, you rather you eat maintenance calories with a couple cheat meals thrown in. Train intensely. Will you gain muscle and no fat? Yeah, if you're maintenance, I think you'll do a good job. And also the difference between bulking and cutting. I mean, you're going to lose muscle when cutting. It almost evens out. And then there's Vitruvian physique. Fucking love this dude. He promoted maintenance calories in a very intelligent way, I found. Maintenance, bulking, the pros and cons of it, we can put it all together, and you guys are going to understand why some people out there should, you know, be bulking, why some people out there like myself may need to rethink that, and potentially at this point in time, maintenance, it might be an overall better strategy. And then there's John Meadows, and I feel like this is one of the best bah, examples to bring up, because he's kind of said sort of similar things to what Greg has said, like he never used like the word main gaining or anything like that, but... Revival in particular, and you've you've shown that you have a respect for John Meadows. Yet, you know, he said, uh, I'll put a clip in, but like, yeah, he said what he said. I think um, sometimes natural guys put on a little too much fat. But I think one of the things that natural guys do is they, they get a little, they eat too much. They go way mm -hmm. too, in a caloric surplus, they're way too deep into a caloric surplus. And then what happens is when they get really fat, now all of a sudden they got to do so much cardio, they got to take their calories so low that they end up losing the muscle they gained. What you might have gained from the heavier bulk might just come off when you diet down again, depending yeah, on how lean yeah. you get. The natural guys, and I'm more like, hey, 14, 15%, it's okay. For body fat. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's I not agree. the end of the world. Yeah, I you agree. Know? But I then agree. they start getting up towards 18, 20, it's like, whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, I know he's a lot more chill and calm and whatever than Greg is, but like, seems a little bit double standardy to me. So I'm, yeah, I'm sure this video has gone on quite long. So in closing, I just want to say that I found Revival's video 
Again, impressive in a lot of ways, but overall to be needlessly aggressive. And I know the retort's gonna be, oh, so Greg's the only one allowed to be aggressive? No, I think that there's a time and a place for some aggression, but it should always be hopefully mitigated in some way, depending on the severity of the issue or whatever. But yeah, I think this is important. I think this is important to mention because it makes it makes you seem a bit hypocritical in my eyes. It's as though you're trying to create an army of Greg haters, an army of people who see bulking and cutting as a dogma, basically an echo chamber for your methodologies, you know, being the only route to take and anyone who who opposes you will be destroyed. Like going going back to my buddy Aaron Maltz of FitLab, you know, again, cool dude. I highly recommend that you, if you're not subscribed to him, that you subscribe to him. Like he has more subscribers than I do, but if you're not, you know, subscribe to me and not to him, you should subscribe to him. He's freaking awesome. But um, ow, it's hit my hand. But yeah, he was he was just trying to be constructive in the comment section as he always is. And Revival responded, but simply by letting him know that he doesn't care about his opinion. And it's like. Like, really, dude? Like, come on. Like, what does that do for anyone? I don't understand. Like, and I'm not trying to imply that you sicked these trolls on him, but, like, he got a lot of heat. And it's like, I can only imagine that you fueled these commenters. But, yeah, just kind of, I don't know. It just, it sucks to see that because Aaron's a really good dude. He's also a dude who has not done, like, bulking and cutting and did very well for himself. And though he doesn't look it, he's nearing 43, I believe. Yes, he's nearing 43. He can correct me if I'm wrong. But, um, so yeah, respect your elders. Bah. I think I've said enough. Um, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Hopefully they'll be constructive and not mean because we don't need any more meanness. Let's just be constructive and just listen to the points being made and respond accordingly. How about that? Um, God, give me a like if you like. Give me a comment, please. Oh, we already talked about that. Subscribe if you're not already. And uh, look out for my next big video. It's going to be awesome. Better than drama shit. I hope that I wasn't too rambly and crazy. But yeah, I'm going to sign off before I get too, too much more of that rambly and crazy. I'm not picking my nose. I had an itch. Ah. Um, wish you all health and happiness. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.